In part one, we left off at the causes of adrenal burnout, and today we're going to talk about some of the more common symptoms of adrenal burnout. And the first symptom we think of when we talk about burnout is just low energy, fatigue, relentless fatigue, waking up tired, going to bed tired. It, it's just we lose the energy to really do the things we love doing. So fatigue and low stamina is one of the more common symptoms of adrenal burnout. Also uh, depression, apathy, loss of motivation, you know, losing the zest for life are some of the more common symptoms. Anxiety, fears and phobias also associated with burnout. and very common is you know when we're having low energy we're going to start craving the bad things the the sugar the carbohydrates the stimulants the caffeines and the red bulls and all those things that pick us up including alcohol including drugs and all that stuff so once we fix the biochemistry then the need for the stimulants and sugars start to decrease so it's always addressing the adrenals so we always want to find out why we're craving these things and when we're burnt out we're going to be craving them uh, another common symptom is low blood pressure um, when we have low blood pressure, usually low blood pressure in the younger generation and eventually as the arterial walls of the, of the vessels start to calcify and harden, then the low blood pressure becomes the high blood pressure. So it's either or. Um, also, we have a lot of impaired digestion. We have low stomach acid. And these are some of the common signs and symptoms of adrenal burnout and joint aches and pains that's huge so you'll start to see when we have adrenal burnout uh, low back pain neck pains all the joints start aching and we have to start connecting the adrenals to this so it's um, you know in my practice as a chiropractor for the last 15 years people coming to me with these aches and pains and they're not making that connection to the adrenals. So it's a very important connection with a lot of our aches and pains. And also a lot of reoccurring infections, you know, very associated with the adrenal glands and allergies. So those are some of the more common signs and symptoms of adrenal burnout. So when we're under burnout, you know, we're gonna have more of the aches and pains, the infections and, uh, you know the blood pressure and the cravings for sweets and the and all these signs and symptoms you know the four phases of adrenal burnout you know it, it's we go through different phases you know in phase one you know maybe it's we're wired you know we have the high cortisol and it's you see these people they they have this kind of a, this fake energy they're always going and they can get away with that for a period of time that eventually that high cortisol then the, you develop the low neurotransmitters and then you're more prone to allergies and infections then another face is we're wired but always tired so there we have the low cortisol the high neurotransmitters and we have a lot of inflammation and pain and then we got to the just basic burnout where we're just plain old tired where the cortisol is low, the neurotransmitters are low, and we're really running on empty. So, you know, I've, I've known uh, a lot of people, uh, friends of mine in their 20s, they kept on going and going and had energy, but I knew when they hit their 30s that they would start crashing and that came true. So you could see these trends and these patterns are very predictable. So some of the myths about burnout, now, you know, burnout's kind of a vague term in medical science, but there are some myths about burnout, and, and myth number one, adrenal burnout is psychological. You know, thinking that, oh, you're just lazy, you're unmotivated. You're lazy and unmotivated because your biochemistry is off. It's not because you don't want to do these things or you're lazy, it's you don't have the energy. And then people say, oh, it's just psycho, you know, it's psychological, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. So far from the truth, if the biochemistry is off, you are not going to have the, uh, you know, the strength and the fortitude to do the things that you want to do. Another myth is um, 
people in burnout have no energy and cannot work. That, you know, you know we see people going to work and they're burnt out. Uh, even though they look normal and they're going to their job, we don't really see that they're really, you know, they're on survival mode, they're getting by, but when they come home, the only thing is, you know, they're ready for bed. So just because that you have a job and you're holding down a job doesn't mean you're not in burnout. So we see a lot of people working that are in burnout. Uh, myth number three, vigorous exercise is good for burnout. Now exercise is good, but we want to avoid depleting the adrenals any further than what they're depleted. So I'm always going to suggest that we really watch this hardcore exercises, especially, you know, these CrossFit things and these marathon things that will tank you. So we want the energy not going into the muscles and, and working out. We want the energy going to healing the adrenals and the organs. So we want movement of the body, but we want it to be more of a lower type of energy, you know, so we're not burning ourselves out. Myth number four, a vacation, a diet, or nutritional supplement can cause recovery from a burnout. Now that's partially true in the initial phases of burnout. So when you're just, you know, when you just have fatigue, usually a nice holiday, a nice vacation, a uh, couple good meals, you, you can recover. But when you go into burnout, you know, a month in the Bahamas, you're not going to recover. You're going to still be in burnout. So it's not just taking a couple days off when you're in burnout. We have to fix the adrenals, we have to fix the biochemistry, and we have to look at the whole story. Um, some other myths, burnout is not an important medical problem unless the stress of burnout causes high blood pressure or other symptoms. Um, the adrenal glands and the thyroid are your energy producing glands and you need energy to do, you know, basic physiological functions from digesting food, repairing cells, you know, uh, growing nails, growing hair, uh, just everything. And it's not just the high blood pressure, that's a manifestation of when the adrenals have been burnt out and the arteries have calcified, then you go into high blood pressure, but the warning signs have been there for years. You just don't wake up and have adrenal burnout. It's been a, a progression that's been happening. It's cumulative over time. Myth number six, burnout occurs only in those in high stress jobs. Burnout is universal. I've seen it in everyone. And the trend that I see, not that I like, but it's a trend that I see, is we're seeing burnout in the younger population. We're seeing, uh, we have a, a term called burnout babies. Babies are being born burnt out. We're seeing teens, um, you know, with all the attention deficit and, and the learning disabilities, that has to do with the adrenals. It's, it's, we're, we're, they're not adrenalized to the point where they have the energy or the attention, so we have to start making this connection. So it's not just the high executive that experiences burnout, it's everyone across the board, women equally in men, and these days children and young teenagers almost as equal in adults. Uh, burnout occurs, no, it's, it's, it's everyone. Burnout affects only physical health. It does affect physical health, but that's not the only thing. You will see depression and apathy and, and low esteem and just the lack of motivation as a result of having no energy. So this is a big theme. Burnout is an overused term within, without a scientific basis. Well, medicine really doesn't have a tool to measure fatigue. So again, it's swept under the carpet and then not until you develop a more serious complication of adrenal burnout uh, do they recognize it. So it really has, has missed the mark. It's gone under the radar and it really is a major problem because it's leading to all the other you know, uh, many symptoms of, of bad health, of, you know, associated with weak adrenals. So the medical profession is far behind it when it comes to understanding adrenal gland problems. In 2011, many still do not, do not recognize adrenal insufficiency, adrenal exhaustion, or adrenal burnout as a real health condition. 
This is very sad as the situation is so common that the official allopathic medical beliefs about adrenal glands are either the adrenal glands work fine or, or basically they don't work at all. Well, every other gland, you know, has degrees of escalation of degree. You know, we know that, you know, um, whether it's the ovaries, the testes, the pancreas, they all have different degrees of pathology. It's not just with the adrenals. It's like you have full-fledged adrenal burnout so the gland doesn't work. No, they're not measuring the the chronic fatigue and the brain fog and all the symptoms leading out before the adrenal glands actually are, are, are really deficient. So um, when you're tired and depressed, we just want to give you a drug for that. We're not looking at the energy producing glands of the adrenal. So, you know, we just want to drug you to death. Uh, the medical answer for adrenal problems is usually a drug and this is unfortunate because we find that the answer is not any drug but it's the elimination of all the drugs that's really the key you know all the drugs that we have taken cumulatively over our entire lifetime in addition we have to remove the toxic metals we got to remove you know all the toxic chemicals all these things are repeating the function of the adrenal gland in the adrenal gland with the, those 12 hormones that it secretes so it's it's the drugs are causing the problem now when a patient comes to me you know on a you know for a visit for adrenal uh, insufficiency adrenal burnout it's just some basic you know you know in-house tests that we do you know that should be a you know, should be uh, a part of every regimen that someone's coming in for adrenal burnout. Some basic test. And one of the tests is Raglan sign. It's a postural blood pressure test where the patient is laying down, we check the blood pressure and the systolic number, it, you know, is what we're looking at. And then after the patient, we check the blood pressure when the patient is lying down, then immediately we have the patient stand up, check the blood pressure, and if the systolic blood pressure does not go up four to 10 uh, millimeters of mercury, then we know that the adrenals aren't working well based on one postural blood pressure test. So that's one clue that, you know, I'll see knowing that, okay, we, we have some signs and symptoms and physical uh, tests that reveal, you know, we're in burnout. Uh, the pupillary reflex test. This is another very simple test that everyone should be doing. We shine the light in the eye, and when we shine the light in the eye, you know, the, the pupil should constrict. And it should stay constricted for, you know, 30, 40 seconds. But when you're under, what, when the adrenals aren't working and you're in burnout, you know, they're going to start to dilate, you know, after a couple seconds. And then we can make that correlation and that connection. Another very simple in-house test that we do, the pupillary reflex test. We also have Sargent's white line test. We just run a fork on the elbow and we'll get some white lines, but it should turn red within and stay red for like 30 to 40 seconds. If it doesn't, we know that we have adrenal insufficiency. Another simple test that we should all be doing. Um, so we have, you know, the exam findings for adrenal stress. We're looking at the basics, you know, and then we're also going to be doing a neurological exam. We're going to do a postural exam as structure determines function. So we want to do a good examination in-house to really get a better picture. And then some of the tools of the trade that I like to use when we're assessing the adrenals, you know, some of my favorites are, we want to look at the, the, the cortisol. Uh, the best test for cortisol is a saliva test where we take morning, afternoon, evening, and late evening samples of saliva and then we can see the diurnal pattern of cortisol. So cortisol is, uh, you know, when the, when the sun rises, cortisol should be high. When the sun sets, cortisol should be low. So with the cortisol test, we get a real diagnostic tool to see how the diurnal pattern of cortisol is really working.
We also want to check for infections. We know that when you have chronic infections, gut infections, mouth infections, unresolved infections, um, it's going to deplete your adrenals because all your energy is going to fighting infections. So we want to do a stool test to see you know, what kind of pathogens are running rampant in your body. Is it Salmonella? Is it H. pylori? Is it Shigella? Is it uh, Candida or some fungal infection? And you'll see that we're plagued with these infections. You know, when we take our dog to the vet, what's the vet always say? Oh, your dog has worms. So, so we need to start understanding how important these chronic infections really are, how they're really taking our energy away because the body's dealing with the infections and depleting you. Um, other tests that we can do, we can do a micronutrient testing and, <clears throat> excuse me, in that and that will tell me the status of, of the vitamins in the body, which is a, a nice test that I like to run. And um, one of my all-time favorite tests, you know, to really, to, to give me the best indicator of adrenal burnout is the hair tissue mineral analysis. This is a test that can measure, predict, validate through a numerical and objective scientific analysis what degree of burnout you're in. Are you in a stage one burnout? You know, so we have different stages and different ways to analyze burnout. And so we have a single burnout pattern, a double burnout pattern. So the more burnout patterns you have, the deeper you're in burnout. So again, fatigue to burnout, different degrees. So knowing how many you know, uh, degrees of burnout we have, single, double, triple, quadruple, this really allows me to know how, how depleted the adrenals are. And so this is why I love the hair tissue mineral analysis because it really is one of the greatest predictors uh, and trends, future trends that we can see in the body. And so, you know, before someone has diabetes, a hair tissue mineral analysis based on the, uh, on the uh, calcium magnesium ratio, that can tell me that you're diabetic 10 years before any lab test can pick that up. So I love the HTMA test. Um, now we need to understand about the minerals because minerals really are the spark plugs of life. And when we do a hair tissue mineral analysis, we're really analyzing the micro and the macro and the toxic metals and minerals. And this really is an amazing tool because we are minerals, you know, three to 4% of our physical bodies are minerals. So when we say dust to dust, you know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, that's the immortal minerals. Minerals are vital. They're the spark plugs of life. And without minerals, we're not going to have enzymatic functions. All cellular energy is, is done through enzymes and, and enzymes need minerals. Our, our body tissues, to make our tissues, we need minerals. The sodium potassium pump, which allows things to come into the cell, bad things to come out of the cell, is mineral dependent. Uh, to contract the muscle, calcium contracts, magnesium relaxes. Uh, nerve transmission, all run by minerals. So we're not really having a deeper understanding on how important these minerals are. And so we need to look at the status of minerals and the hair tissue mineral analysis gives us the greatest predictor and analyzer to scientifically, quantitatively measure how the minerals and the mineral ratios are, which is predictive on the adrenals, the thyroid, blood sugar, and many other trends that we can see. And this is the mineral wheel, and the mineral wheel can be the medicine wheel, it could be the zodiac wheel, it's the wheel of life. And they're interrelated, you know, you know mag magnesium is gonna have you know, a relationship with calcium, it's gonna have a relationship with phosphorus, it's gonna have a relationship with manganese. So we see the inner relationship of the mineral. So this mineral wheel is the wheel of life. And we see, you know, when Mendeleev, you know, came up with the periodic table, um, 
we, we can start understanding how important these minerals and these, uh, you know, th all these things are so integral for health. And so just looking at the halogens, you know, when we see the halogens, they're very similar and very close in their valence, but if we don't have iodine, uh, maybe because we have a deficiency in selenium and selenium converts T3 to T4, but if we have a deficiency in selenium, that may tank the iodine. And if the iodine's tanked, then the fluoride is going to come in there. And if the fluoride gets into the thyroid gland, it's going to calcify the fluoride gland. And so we have to have a deeper understanding of the relationship of these minerals. Very important in getting healthy. The health energy continuum. So when we have energy, we have you know high energy. That's health. You know when you see you know you see the old people looking at the kids and the kids are running around. They say, where does that Johnny get that energy from? They're very jealous when they see the kids you know running around with all this energy, and yet their energy has tanked, and they think that's normal aging. No, that's not normal aging. It's common, but not normal. What's going on is the adrenal and the thyroids are tanking and they're tanking because of basically two things, toxicity and deficiency. And this is why we need to address this. So as we go into this continuum from high energy to low energy, we go into disease and we don't have the energy to heal the tissues and the cells of the body. So we have two basic hair mineral patterns that we see. Um, when we're in slow oxidation, high calcium, high magnesium, low sodium, low potassium, high calcium, high magnesium, low sodium, low potassium, that's the first sign that you're in, you're really approaching adrenal exhaustion. So that's the first thing that we look at. And this is all that you had, we call that a single burnout phase. Um, if the sodium goes really low and the potassium goes really low, uh, then we're getting into more critical burnout. And so we can see that, you know, this, this burnout based on patterns. So what are some of the patterns? When potassium drops below five, that would be another double or triple burnout. If sodium drops below 10, let's say, then we know that's another uh, real indicator of adrenal burnout. If calcium goes even higher, we call that the calcium shell, and we're starting to calcify, and we call that deposition diseases, where the calcium is depositing into the tissues that are hardening and sclerosing, whether it's the heart, the eyes, the brain, the joints, it's going where it's, it shouldn't be going. Um, and then also, if, uh, we call this an inversion. If potassium starts to go higher than sodium, then this is an inversion. This right here is a real bad pattern. And this is, this is where we call your immune deficient. And we see this trend a lot. Now, this could be a pseudo um, inversion. If we're starting to dump heavy metals, that can cause an inversion. But if we're not, you know, doing a detox and the heavy metals and the poisons aren't coming out when we see this inversion, we know that that's a, a, a trend that we don't want to see because that's, you know, that's going to be your cancer, your autoimmune diseases, that's going to be your uh, neurodegenerative diseases, and that's your AIDS when we start to see these trends. So burnout indicators, you know, again, this, this, the most important single adrenal exhaustion burnout pattern on a properly performed hair mineral analysis is a sodium level less than about 10 and a potassium level less than 5. When we see that, we know you're in burnout. Um, and again, some of the other reliable indicators, if we're in the four lows, the four lows is when we're below the ideal numbers of calcium should be at 40, magnesium 6, sodium at 25, potassium at 10. When we're below the, the four ideal numbers, we call that the four lows, we call that the tunnel of death. And that's another indicator you're in real severe burnout. It could be the three lows where maybe three out of the four are low. Uh, 
uh, again, when we have a sodium potassium ratio, that would be an inversion. That's another indicative sign of burnout. So that's why the hair tissue mineral analysis really, it gives me more bang for the buck than any other test that I run because it really is great at predicting uh, the trends in the body. And adrenal burnout. Now, the blessing of burnout. So, adrenal burnout can actually be the best thing to happen to someone because it's going to be a reality check. It's going to force you and compel you to look at things a little bit different because you can't go on and burn out because that's a slow aging death. Um, so when we go into burnout, there's going to be some things that are going to have to change. It's going to, you're going to have to change. Maybe it's your diet. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's your relationships. And so burnout is a blessing when we look at it from a different angle um, because it's going to really compel you to make the changes that you need to make. And if you don't make the changes and you go on your, your, the same path, it, it, again, it's another nail in the coffin. So it's really, don't look at burnout as a disease, look at it as a blessing and a chance to change your physiology, and it's up to you to make these changes. So at Back to Natural Health, um, you know, what makes my office different than any other office? First, it's my personal experience on how I overcame adrenal burnout. You know, it's, I knew that I didn't want to go through life with no energy. I knew that if I didn't have energy, I wouldn't be able to do the things I love doing. And I didn't want to, you know, go through life with no energy. So I made it, uh, my number one mission was to heal myself. And at the, um, at the Oracle of Delphi, under the God of Apollo, it says, Physician, know thyself. Physician, heal thyself. So I spent the, you know, after I graduated, I spent the next really 30 years healing myself. And I studied, you know, traditional uh, protocols, ancient protocols, medical protocols. I looked at everything that I could find relating to low energy. So to me, it's really... Uh, it was a quest of mine to figure out how to heal my own body. And right now at 52, this is the best I've ever felt, but it didn't happen overnight. It was a continuing of making changes in education and learning. Learning about what is poisoning me, what is making me feel good, and the emotional stressors, and you know, uh, all these components have to come together. So this is what I bring to the table, you know, when someone is treating, you know, with me. And I like to address my patients. I have a trinity. I like to address you metabolically, structurally, and neurologically. So that's the trinity I like to work with. And so what's next? Um, if you're watching this video and you're suffering with adrenal exhaustion or burnout, call my office because I'm going to make you a great offer because the first two visits, on visit one, we do a complete examination. We're going to go through some of the, the tail, tail signs of burnout, you know, the blood pressure, the, the, the pupillary reflex, sergeant's white line. We're also going to do a complete neurological exam, a structural exam, and a vital examination, blood pressure and measurements and stuff like that. Uh, bring in your labs. We're going to review your labs. And it's important that you fill out all forms before coming into my office. So, I, so you fill out all the forms. And then we also have an online WICO assessment that measures 15 health markers. And then on visit, visit two, it's a case review. If I accept your case, um, we're going to overview, um, we're going to go over the further tests that I think will be indicated. More than likely, it'll be a hair tissue mineral analysis. It'll also be probably a cortisol test or a stool test. We'll go over what other tests I think um, I need to run. We're going to go over my report of findings, you know, the pertinent things that I found on examination based on your medical history and my findings. And then we're going to go over a treatment plan. And so I, I'm going to present you a treatment plan on how I can help you overcome your adrenal burnout with a mineral rebalancing program, with a detoxification protocol, with modalities to address 
you know, the energy systems in your body. We got to address you structurally. Uh, so we'll, we'll have a treatment plan for you that will be very doable for most, you know, because there are some diet modifications and taking supplements, but it's all doable. And also review your financial obligations so there is no hidden agenda. You're going to know exactly what you're in for. And my offer is, you know, I can only take on five new cases per month because it, it's a lot managing a case. So usually the first two visits, it's $450, but if you sign up and you mention that you've watched this presentation, I'm going to take these first two visits for $125. And then the three rules that I have for accepting your case. One, you must be serious about making life choices life changes. If you're not serious, don't waste my time, don't waste your time. You got to be serious because there is, you know, diet and detoxification protocols, homework that you'll be doing. Um, you got to take accountability for health. If you think that I'm going to do all the work, think again. Healing is up to you. I'm showing you what works. I spent the last 30 years studying what works and I'm going to take my my you know expertise to show you how I can help you so you have to take accountability for your health and here's another biggie um, insurance only pays a small portion of this care so I have made my care plans very affordable that 96 percent of the people coming in to see me will be able to afford my care plans and for as little as 200 to 400 dollars per month I can get you on the road to recovery and we have uh, financing if you have you know fairly pretty good credit we have interest free fi financing up to 10 to 12 months um, so how serious is your health on a scale of 1 through 10 what is the seriousness about approving your condition if you're not at a 7, 8, 9, or 10, don't waste your time. How is it, you know, also reflect on how has no energy affected your life? How has it affected your relationships? And so you got to start seeing how important getting your energy back really is. How has it affected your work, your happiness, your whole outlook on life? So if you're not truly serious about turning your health around and due to time constraints, I can only accept those patients that are really committed. So I want to thank you for watching this presentation and just remember health is truly the greatest wealth. So don't be a penny wise and a pound foolish. Uh, health is the greatest thing. So, you know, a billionaire on his deathbed will say, I would give it all away to have health. Health is the greatest gift. And I, I hope to see you, if you're suffering with adrenal burnout, low energy, depression, anxiety, aches and pains and, and infections, I can help you, but you got to be committed. So I look forward to seeing you. So call my office today at 773-325-2225 and look forward to helping you recover. Thank you.